That's the WNAC TV Channel 7 Boston, and it's time now for Newsroom 7. The 6 p.m. weekend report. Saturday, June 9th, 1977. With Peter Wiggins and the weather, Fred Ward and the weather, Peter Wiggins and the news, and Ray Reese on sports. Right now, Peter Wiggins. Good evening, everybody, on the Saturday evening, June 9th, 1979. I'm Peter Wiggins, and the news, what's up at Newsroom 7, the Saturday report. Top story at 6 is. Financial disclosure forms required for the first time in state history show that Massachusetts legislatures have outside interest in earnings and diverse of those citizens as they represent. The forms made public yesterday revealed that 95 of the 200 legislatures have no income outside the state house, but the remaining 105 who do so at the earnings rates for $1,000 and $100,000 in endeavors of varied as push carts, cranberries, bush and fleet, and for the sound the rat poison. Yeah, you know, there was no script. There News Seven's Gary Armstrong has a report. For example, Representative Emma guests Sarah, Democrat of East Boston, and owns a produce stand in Boston's historic K market, but it's produced no income last year. Meanwhile, his colleague, Representative William Q. McLean, Junior, Democrat of Fairhaven, made more than $35,000 from two fishing companies named after premium whiskeys. In the Senate, Joseph B. Tully, Democrat of Drake, had made between $10,000 and $25,000, or as a New England distributor rep poison. Decon, his Senate conferees, William M. Bolger, Democrat of South Boston, Dennis L. McKenna, Democrat of Somerville, and Francis X. McCann, Democrat of Cambridge, have inclination to play the stock market. David H. Locke, the Republican peer from Wellesley, has some stock he believes may be worthless, but as a lawyer, Locke earned more than $50,000 a year. As for business entrepreneurs, Representative Raymond S. Peck, Democrat of Dartmouth, owns the driver range. Representative Charles N. D. Cass, Republican of Wareham in the Cranberry Business Center. Representative David R. Nelson, incoming New Bedford, is a bookseller. And Representative Walter E. Pickford, Democrat of the Berlin, is sometimes a logger who sold investments in less than 35 crores of firewood. The forms provide a first time glimpse into the financial lives of the state's 160 representatives and 40 senators. Their financial worth, their business representatives, a properties, and the monetary success and failures. And the total legislature partner is decidedly average. And the earnings of the governor of Massachusetts, Edward J. King, who during the last year's election campaign disclosed that his necessary and income was between $53,000 and $107,500, so it dropped dramatically less than when virtually all of the dissent was spent. Brandon and the governor, the governor's necessary and income was between $13,500 and $32,500. The, the latest information comes from a financial disclosure report that the governor of a high state and county officials and all state legislatures filed with a state ethics commission. The report was made public by the commission yesterday. Income was reported within specified ranges at specified amounts so that exact figures are not furnished. The governor now owns and earns a state income of $40,000 a year reported that the bulk of the 978 income came from private businesses. Okay, I'm talking Newsroom 7. And this is a photo of New Celtic Larry Bird at press conference yesterday. And normally for new signings, new people who come to teams usually wear suits and ties, but Larry Bird decided to go. Without a tie and just a casual shirt. And he is the center of attention in the city of Boston as it was an appropriate touch of a Billy Bud innocence to him. He was a young Bob Phillip played by a young Gary Cooper. Everything filmed in black and white. A tractor silk coffin in the background. The big city folk just falling all along themselves. The whole scene seemingly in downright silly. All those money for playing basketball but it was real shine about a new pair of shoes. Larry Bird was just time more perfect. You wanted the savior? You had the savior direct from some B-movie I did but what an odd savior would be. He sat in the midst of the three-piece suits and all top of all this set of money and under this heavy expectation with a fine natural ECS yesterday morning. What was all the fuss? No need to get all dressed up to celebrate becoming a millionaire. No need to slick down here and funny up your hat. What's the importance of a million dollars? Really? If everyone else was playing for $10,000 a year, I'd be happy playing for $10,000. Larry Bird said it on the high. Today he signed a contract with the Celtics to become the highest paid rookie in the history of professional sports. I'd be happy playing for nothing. To tell the truth, I'd just be happy I'm, I'm now if I were going to be teaching school next year. I probably would live better if I didn't have the money. Now I just got to worry about losing it. He was real no doubt about it that he obviously did not not care about nothing. He was what he was, just a hick from French lick. If he banged around the English language a bit, if we scheduled his red shirt and khaki pants, well, the big timers were formal. That's so be it. He was what we was. There weren't going to be any representatives to be peeled away. He had covered a long list of grumpy press notices on his way here before the Robin Tully and Kamiki Vidazi and his NSA team rolled towards Cinderella happening this year. But in the end, he was easy. Not that anybody shouldn't be easy on the day he makes a million dollars or three. 
but he was down home casually. He was easy, but not Johnny and smooth. I think people are going to like him. His engine, Bob Wolf said, I walked in the beginning and I really didn't know much about him. One of the first times I was with him, but we were talking about the people from Terry Hood about money. They brought up the names of Yankee pitcher Tommy John. And does it afford us something to stare at? The students at Massachusetts College of Art moved their work to the school on next door creature left over from the Charles River Festival. And yeah, Edward Spinach, Shetty, Kalamayan, he might have been a hit when he coached Peter Falk on the final points of safe cracking for the Brain Straw movie, but we bombed when he led to the two companions. For the real thing at LaGuardia Airport, a 40s address of Columbia, along with John Melgan and the reputed bookmaker, and stay along with Thomas Murray, for bought in a steel multi million dollar payroll shipment at the airport. Malgan 49, Columbia 40, and Murray 42 were arraigned yesterday before a U.S. Minister joined El Kidden in U.S. District Court in Brooklyn. Columbia was held in lieu of $100,000 in bail, and Murray and Lou of the $50,000, and Malgan in lieu of $25,000. All three of the suspects have extensive arrest records of 40 D said. Malgan is the son of late Hugh Malgan, Boston, and once prominent Irish Mafia gang in New York. Happy ass postman Greg Anderson said that the three men have been observed by agents on two separate Thursday night school and five drive runs on a planned robbery at the restricted area. At the runway at the airport, and Henderson also said that the F40s had tape recorders of three suspects discussing an accident and weapons they might need with an informant. Port of 40 police said that the payroll phone each Thursday night aboard. In her fifth day on the stand today, Catherine McDonough admitted that she lied. Washington, the government in the drug industry yesterday announced a recall most drugs containing a cancer cause and antihistamine for the Years that have been active in ingredient in such non prescription sleepy pills as Summonex, etc., and PM, and compost. The recall means that the product should sell off the charts now. Disappear quickly from pharmacies and enormous stores that sell over the counter drugs. Wayne Pines, a spokesman for the Food and Drug Administration, said individual companies who decide where they're doing and reverse consumers who have the drugs in their homes. The voluntary recall involves drugs containing metaphetamine, which has been about 25 years in use. The announcement was made jointly by Secretary Joseph A. Califano of the Department of Health, Education, Welfare, and the Property Association, whose members make 80% of the 90% of the non prescription products contain metaphylene. Califano said consumers should consult the ingredient list on the medicines and see if they contain metaphylene. The recall, which will move not over the counter nasal sprays and skin medication that contain relatively small amounts of metaphylene because of the risk associated with those preparations is much lower, the government said. The National Cancer Institute concluded in April that metaphylene causes liver cancer to rats and mice and should be present to those on humans. The FDA later reached in the same conclusion. Pines said companies that do not belong to the trade association will be asked to recall their products containing their ingredients they could face seizure of drugs that they do not comply. The property association said that the most firms have been stopped manufacturing drugs containing the chemical and some have begun to ship reformulated products. Among the other affected products are Sleepies and Night Tall, production of another Nirvana made by Miles Laboratories was halted shortly after the cancer to suit's findings. Officials said reformation involves substituting the perlamine a chemically related but less potent than his meaning for the traditional ingredients. Town events ticket sales began Tuesday morning in Chapter and within hours, even for a few islanders that have ever heard of the New York studio group known as the 34th 24th Street Band, the tickets were sold out. It wasn't after all the music that people cared about that they bought their tickets to Thursday open at Allen's New Club. At the nightclub, the hot tin roof, it was exciting. If I had known promises, what might happen to the Carly Simon happening? Nobody was disappointed. It was Carly Simon's first crack at rented and the venue did not spot, and it was clearly a champagne evening for the Allen resident was part of known and all hostess. Famously, just off stage at her base, Carly was here and there, checking the lightning from the control room. American Airlines reiterated yesterday that it was never wrong at all, with its maintenance procedure for all DC 10 jumbo jets, it's all. Challenge suggested by federal investigators that damage from maintenance practice might have caused an American DC 10 to crash in Chicago May 25th, killing 272 people aboard. We're surprised that the National Transportation Safety Board should suggest and imply that America was negligent in the maintenance, said David Lobb, the airline's public relations director, in a telephone interview from New York. The board said that in a report submitted earlier this week that the Federal Aviation Administration FAA that damage from maintenance practice revenue and structural problems might have caused a Chicago disaster. Saying that he will be banking on the Midwest to support U.S. Representative John B. Anderson of Illinois announced his candidacy for the Republican presidential nomination. The same as the governor and informant Peter Aver appeared to gain credibility yesterday when a district court of the U.S. jury returned guilty findings against two men stolen. Lover Kutch was accused of receiving and selling 25 of the stolen lever coats. Ava was the principal prosecution witness at the trial of Anthony Zipsipolo, 40 of Swamp Court, and Alfred Cataldo, 65 of Ronsdale, in Alton, Maine. In the course of the stolen goods trial, Ava made the 
Fame that he paid perhaps to U.S. Representative Nicholas Marvelous, Democrat of Peabody, and James to be born in age to the House Speaker Thomas B. O'Neill Jr. Paul Payne and the Dinah Church's Avery, who told the Vidurk at the hideaway where he was under government protection, said, I'm elated. People are beginning to bully me. I told the truth. The government informant testified that he purchased a stolen clothes from the title. Prosecutor David Tromey had organized crime strike force, prevented strong corroborating their evidence to support Avery's testimony. Also, but the in government in this case was a videotape of the sale and recorded a telephone conversation between Avery and the defendants. Kitado also said that he admitted stealing the clothes to Avery, but claimed that he did not know that they were stolen. The clothes then moved from a Korean manufacturer to a Worcester firm that disappeared from a freight terminal in in South Boston. U.S. Judge Walter J. Skinner scheduled sentence for the two defendants on June 28th. Avery's allegations against Marvels and Rowan became public during the cross examination of neighbor. The informer would study the U.S. bribe. Marvels went in the later to was Mayor Peabody to take care of liquor licenses and problems that Alangi owned there. Ever place said charges will be filed against Gordon Brown, the robbery victim who fired a shotgun in his fleeing and sales and accident wounded a six year old boy. A Chicago Sun Times reporter shares an undercover investigative report and techniques with the fellow reporters at their annual conference in Boston. Record and trial in the U.S. District Court disputed defendant leaps from seat to the defense fellow defendants as mafia. Pine cuts state income taxes may be included in state Senate version of the new state budget. Educators are seeking an additional $200 million in the state aid to local schools in the new state budget, which now calls for about $900 million in educational aid. After a coming a heart attack and having his leg amputated, Brooklyn Mayor David Crosby stated he's ready for action. One of the most outspoken cuts of the Vietnam War, years halls at soapbox for debate at 10th reunion of wherever Harvard should invest. 50% off carbon, 50% off <laughs> <laughs> The last of the big Lincolns rolled down the assembly line. Seven major OSHA shippers and 13 of their executives fined $8.1 million after their pleading no contest of price fixing charges. Senator Edward M. Kennedy holds a 10 1 public edge over the President Jimmy Carter among the leaders of the auto, not at auto worker locals. Riders, truckers who want higher speed limits and more diesel fuel aren't getting much support in the U.S. for their blockades and traffic slowdowns. The Environmental Protection Agency says 14,000 Florida residents whose homes are building an old phosphate mine space at 35% higher danger of dying from lung cancer. President Jimmy Carter has sent Congress legislation to make Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday January 15th a legal holiday for 2.1 million federal employees. Charges of four of 17 Ku Klux Klan members began trying in Birmingham, Alabama, and charges of arresting blacks and civil rights workers in the state were dismissed from a lack of evidence. The Arkansas Supreme Court ordered the release of a 17 year old girl who was jailed for contempt of court because she failed to show up at the trial for three years she was. She raped her last winter. Governor Plain said a town 40 miles from Manaraganiqua in what appears to be the start of a counter defense against left-wing sundays and guerrillas. Israeli officials have said that the Palestine Liberation Organization has moved into the headquarters from the southern Lebanese city of Tyre. Pope John Paul II visits Poland and Thailand, where he laments from Catholics from neighboring communist lands that have been prevented by the government from joining in the pilgrimage. Ghana's new military leader said election skills for June 18 to return to the country to the civilian rule will have to be postponed possibly for three months, and he said the country was not entirely pacified. Trans Australia Airlines studio this outwitted a hijacker as he held a shotgun to a pilot's head at Brisbane Airport and ended up the hijacking about 30 minutes after it started. Reverend Vincent Porti, a 35 year old Roman Catholic priest in Sligo, Ireland, was charged with forgery after a question by a police investigating a bank raid. A palestinian have come in May 22 was given as four life sentences for the murder of an Israeli studio and gun and a green Indian attack on Israeli Airlines crew bus last August. Oi! On the way now, here now is Fred B. Cole. All right, thank you. All right, here now, wait a minute now, Fred Ward. All right, thank you, Vader. Right now, current conditions at 6 o'clock reports at Logan Airport, 80 degrees of temperature, dew point about 69 degrees, humidity 69 percent, by a parameter 3.9 inches, visibly 7 miles in wind, south south, about 15 miles, and it is a sticky, sticky day in Boston, and we'll continue that way for the hours of tonight and then on Sunday. All right, current conditions around the region at 6 o'clock. We got 80 degrees of temperature on Worcester, 78 in Chickabee and uh, in Westfield, 79 in Albany, 79 in Lebanon, New Hampshire, 81 in Concord, 85 in Manchester, New Hampshire, 75 in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, 72 in Palm Maine, 72 in Providence, Vermont, 73 in Bedford, it's 72 in Falmouth, 67 in High Island, 72 in Marshall Vineyard, 64 in Nantucket. We got 81 in Hartford, it's 74 in New Haven, 75 in Bridgeport, and it's 71 in New York and 70 out in this slip. Andy says the majority of and let's take a look at our weather map around the country. A dividing line of a cold front from Texas, from northern Mexico and Texas, and stretching it all the way down to mid-section of the country. 
Merge with a safety fund from Illinois, down from Michigan, and cold front from Ontario, stretch it up in upstate New York, up in North New England, and up in Canada is separating the cool high pressure from the western portion of the country with a cool front from Canada to a warm air from the Gulf of Mexico going into the Gulf states and much of the east coast. So this is warm and humid weather. While it's cool for much of the western portion of the country and some showers and thunderstorms from northern Texas and Oklahoma stretching out of eastern Kansas, Nebraska and up in the midsection of the country up to Wisconsin and up in the northern Michigan and up to southeastern Minnesota here. All right, seven. Okay, let's stick with our Boston weather here. Tonight, low clouds and fog again. Lows in the lower 60s. It's tomorrow becoming part cloudy, hazy, warm and humid and eyes in the lower 80s. Probably rain 20% tonight. And southwest winds increase by 10 to 50 miles per hour by tonight. <laughs> and most cloudy tonight for the Massachusetts, including Cape Cod Islands, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. Cloudy tonight with a considerable fog, south coastal sections, and some fog forming inland. Low temperatures again, low 60s, and fog lifting during the morning hours, and becoming in part cloudy, warm and hazy this afternoon and tomorrow. Scattered shots and thunderstorms in the western hills in the afternoon and evening, both days and hours, today and tomorrow, in the 80s, except mostly in the 70s and south coastal sections. By main and ranch, part cloudy tonight. Lows in the upper 50s and 60s, and chance of shots tomorrow, highs in the 60s. For Vermont, chance of brief shots, that's from 30 afternoon evening, highs in the 80s, today and tomorrow, low mainly in the 60s. Same forecast for Mass, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Park Cloud, Monday, chance of rain Tuesday and Wednesday, highs will be mostly in the 70s with overnight lows on the upper 50s and middle 60s. Main and Hampshire, chance of shots early Monday, and a clear and fair Tuesday, chance of shots again Wednesday, highs in the 70s, low 80s, and overnight lows in the 50s. And for Vermont, variable continental occasional shots of thunderstorms, so higher for doing highs in the upper 70s and 80s, and overnight lows in the mid 50s and mid 60s. Here. Sunset 8 19 p.m. and turn on the lights by 8 24 p.m. and high tide 11 23 p.m. and full moon June 10th 7 56 a.m. last quarter moon June 17th 102 a.m. new moon June 24th 7 59 a.m. and first quarter moon July 2nd 10 24 a.m. That's coming in for the weather. I am Fred Ward. Have a good evening. We'll be back at 11 and then after this commercial break will be the sports with Roy Rice. Alright, sports time, right back. Socks did good at Fenway against Trans. I show do, Peter. These days made fantastic. Chill mugs and convertibles, 240Z. But most of all, when it's 90 degrees and winds blown from home plate toward Beverly Farms, days of the day for which Red Sox hitters were put together. One ball, Jim Rice hit almost straight the line in the gin and tongue and on the Gilby sign on the left field center field horizon. One Ferdinand hit good middle one way in the right field. He pitched well for far and he could have pitched the Twins manager Gene Mott said with his poor Billy Good starter's brother Jackson who has losing five to nothing. After four innings and Carl Gans. It looked like they were passing the baton and Mutt Chin hit the screen. The Red Sox hit to the cycle for the first six batters of the game and got worried after beginning. The eighth and eleven and a half in these days produced games like yesterday's. In today's 12 6 Red Sox panned the Twins and Mike Slynn, Yastrzemski, and Kartofitz hit homers. The count of Panda at 17 hits, good for 38 total bases and 34,324. Sweated that more beer than Ray Flynn would have ever dreamed of. And Mike Trez had one hitter in the eighth inning and only ended up a little worried than both benches empty. Tom Bermond could have won days like relievers deserve saves for preserving seven run leads in this week of mid July weather. Summer is a city added up to a 5 1 home stand. In which the Taiwanese had 12 homers, 4 triples, and 22 doubles, and 50 runs, and 8.3 average per game, and a 3.66 batting average, and 0.661 slugging average. Ah, Fenway, ah, 22 and a half. Ah, how easy it is to have a 2.44 batting and 3.40 slugging average on the road. Blurred away, first the individual details. Rice added his 12 homers and 2 doubles, which prompted someone to begin a press box pool on the date when he assumed the AL home run leadership for keeps. In the last week, when the hitters began, they have started hitting, and he's begun getting pitch at. Rice had hit five homers in the six games, vaulted the second in the league, and slugging beyond Lynn at 589. Third in the hit since anyone in the third with total bases. Beyond George Brett at Lynn to 126. The homer he hit in the fifth off Erickson pass in the east of the light tower in the left center, and hasn't been heard from since it plunked the line. Lynn checked out the 3 1 homer and 6 off Mike Bassett, and some 15 rows up in the bleachers and added a double and asked Slung in 604 and has 131 total bases and knocked in 52 runs, four less than California's Don Baylor and Fitz got its first homer double and single to make him 18 for 35 in the last eight games, which has seen his average jump to 313, even his elbow has leveled off to the point where he has been to remain. It designated to the 19th home run two up. He's had a lot of days away to man now. 
But he will take it and he cross one by the bottom. Shouldn't have been. Then there are three children with Enel with his first family homer. Matt wasn't pleased with the familiar bits. Yeah, wait, wait, Matt off. Craig Kuzik took fist when he reached the first off ape and maybe he should give Mott to fist off the book he was sending before the game unless Mike Marshall already given his copy. He has chance to cut the kind of homer and he doesn't get often now that he's a dead pull hitter. The 2 one three twenty foot net job in the first. He added a double and now has 393 homers and 2,927 hits. Stan L. Simmons on the countdown. 7-3 away from 3,000 hit mark. Poor Erickson, 06, 7.24. Really didn't pitch that family. What he got was the equivalent of a fraternity initiate from the fraternal order pitchers of the United Indians and the legislation should have pitched on in these days in Fenway. Jerry Remy breaking an 018 slump pass, then infield hit it over the man. And Rick Burleson pushed a double down the right field line that Hoskin Powell missed playing in the cameraman. Yes, hit it is two out net job, fist kid, a ball job, their fans away from us. Outfitters and Butch Johnson knocked his 27 run in 30 games with a single fist corner in the third, made it found enough and win. Why Clint the gin and Tom in the fifth enough was enough, and Charles' first pitch of the game was slapped back by the box five power. A ball to us, and men regretted not reaching it. How did the man hit in the game? To us, an exceptional curveball served out of the fourth inning wild streak and the end of the game with an one hitter in the eighth. I thought it a pretty good drill. Then I named, I don't know how, I thought I made pitches strikes home by our Nick Birmingham, where's it calling them? When I left, I told them I thought it was a little lazy. Trust didn't look good beefing up. Believe me, I had 11 for And later said, pitchers in here sometimes do the same thing. I was just trying for a Sajara to it. Stop me. Bergamon got the last squats and Torres hit a six win. The Torres didn't finish after leading 11 and off down. The Erickson saw a decent pitch and performance turned into a nightmare. Should have. Meanwhile, last night in Detroit, Red Sox. Senate Everton, Manapan. These days aren't meant for pictures. They meant for hitters, particularly with South City Hitters and the Tabas and the Baseball into Gin and Tonics. And this is the Fred then catch as he tumbles the ground after making a diving catch and hit ball by Trin Soskipal in the third inning. Sock won 12 6, now, 2 team million tomorrow. Sock needed not one, but two nifty plays from Xander Bogart. Tonight, the New England team and square off and against the Detroit Express at an NASL soccer game in Detroit tonight. The boys losing their sixth straight game. And finally, we take you to the East Room at the White House where President Obama. Honor the Yukon men's and women's NCAA champion team and watch on your far left here. Whoa. Spectacular bids, quest for a triple crown victory at Belmont State. Failed as he finishes third in the Belmont and Golden at the second, so that means that Coastal was the Belmont State's winner. I can't believe that happened. As this victory is timed in two twain and three fifths. At tennis and French Open and women's singles, <laughs> final Chris Evaloy of US defeated Wendy Turnbull of Australia 6 2 and 6 0 in men's doubles finals. Jane and Sandy Mary United defeated Ross Case and Phil Dent, Australia 6 4 6 4 and 6 4. In Atlanta Golf Classic in Atlanta, it was and the mean you know, leaders of seven sorts of Fuzzy Zell and Joe. Him and LPGA Championship at Kings Island, Ohio. Jocelyn Best, you lead one stroke of Donna Young. <laughs> 116 women will tee off in the 33rd WGAM. Eddie Noble Baker. Competition Tuesday and Wednesday Kinnanet Golf Course in Marion. Golf has been all so much a good part of my life that I went to pass. On the pleasure game today, I was at Edipic, who was offered the Baker Trophy in 1946 in the Nets in a format of a two day, 36 hole stroke play competition. Baker not after Jenny resides with her son and sister in her golden days. She played out of Oakley Country Club in Marshfield. And among her golden memories, she has a Pennsylvania State Women's Championship Award, a designation of USG official, a National Log Drive Award, and trophies for the five best women's cells she won. I met my husband, Ed Fred Goff, said Baker, I was just after World War I at Belmont CC when I was playing for the Philadelphia United, the Griscom Cup matches against Massachusetts and New York. The 17th stable barrier of the Palm carried the 11 to 10 favorite teams that are 8. Thousand seven twenty-one friends to the victory in the first run at the twenty thousand all added Boston. Twenty and handicap today it's set up for dance. The five-year-old Chestnut son of Hawaii win by Fender and Jimmy Martin scored a two and a half length front run in the victory over the Shell Stables. Julius Amber and beat the Stefanos over Spin who finished in the dead heat for a second and a six furlong feature. Better bomb winning this second race in the only four starts this year. Paid four dollars twenty cents and two dollars and eight cents at two dollars and sixty cents. Julie Amber went by. Charlie Pingan returned two dollars four cents and two dollars four cents while Overspin returned five dollars eighty cents and three dollars eighty cents. Under direction of Jockey called Gamadrell and Martin Nelson to bear the palm and impressive winner of the memorable day, Captain Suffolk into the late shortly out of the 
Six belts, starting the gate with it at Gold Key Stable, Spicer Brook, and Klaus is attended some low premier risk there as it please. Three led to the field and nine spinners along the back stretching in the far turn. Martin Ed bears the palm of winner in the three of the 16 races of last year in the front by the furrow turning into the home stretch and it was simply a matter of who will take the second and the third position. Overspin and 52-1 shot took the rail with an eight of a mile to race and held on gamely for the dead heat while well, challenged by Julian Zambers. Quitchett came in from the sixth place early in the race and beat the palm and raced the six furlongs with a fast track in the rapid 110 2 fifths. The win was worth 12,465 dollars for a pair of palm with increased to its 1979 earnings to 32000 $545. Probably that everybody knows about the New England Weber said by Mark Twain. Too bad the old boy didn't make this part. And we made some remarks about Wednesday's observation would have been graphic. Some of the observations. The aspen off here and in the yesterday's Dolans were rather earthy and a variety of conditions hit the place at all at once. While some boats went sailing, Bevity did say the majority portrayed marine still alive and was a strange pattern in Eastern Slamber race that the season's first overnighter was being startled out at Tinker's Gong. There was a settling of 10 11 and not to tell steadily while the committee was sending the class A boat up on the first leg, the eight leg, one side, one, one mile, of course, then covered the Massachusetts Bay. Less than five yards away, Boston YC had obviously no longer concern in the outside line fleet, and after a couple of hours of complete frustration, the sponge was tossing in accommodation for the grip will resume two weeks in the day. How long held luck held in the offshore fleet won't be ignored until all the hens get back sometime today. But one of the last scene of the fleet of 24, a good size turnout for this early season was hard, and the wind heading towards the first weather mark the Boston Lightship Boy of the Han at that point. West day at them start beta, Baltic 42 and scratch both in the Division has a slight lead as the Charlie Lake does back up with the rest of the closely, much closer stern. Buddy Rick and Egg and Armour's every weight varsity crew beta to expect a spectacular bid here on the Thames River if you're less TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> E-Mass baseball scores today. Milton over Felmouth 5 2. Burlington over St. John's 10 7 in. Nine innings here. Lynn English over. Catholic Memorial, one to nothing. Lowell over New Bedford, five to four. Woburn, five, Somerville, three. Natick over Taunton, 15 to four. It's at the Bucksburg, four. Brennan, three in 11 innings. A Parnkit, 10. Chris, Water Radium, eight. Hull, one, North Brennan, nothing. Boston Light, nine. Franklin, one. Greater Lawns, five, Jamaican Plain, two. Menendez, nine. St. Clement Kyle, one. Norwell 14, Copley 3, it was Somerset 2, Lake Costco 1, Rockland 11, Bedford 6, Coral Cassie 11, Old Rochester 10, Sedgwick 8, Mills 3. And Long Meadow tops the North to North for Lake Cross Trotto 12 to 6. And Robbie Fitzgerald seems to be headed to Chicago Blackhawks at a deal. With Real Clutter and Buddy Howard, Serge Bitter led a list of Weldon Davis left out yesterday with the National Hockey League. Willie sits a list of players today with play for the old WHA clubs. Plus, we found Friday and gave 17 to couple of clubs to the church. We the select players. The four WHA teams later exiled the church and keeping the two skaters plus two goalies. On the party of the selection list, Howard and Chicago Blackhawks was claimed their one time superstar, but be off for Winnipeg. Meanwhile, Chicago did not take Cloutier the high score Quebec for it. Uh, Nor needs to keep up with the priority. The select list Quebec reported the made the deal with it. The Hawks will be sent for the Robbie for Turkey to Chicago because the Hawks did not pick Cloutier. But earlier, another high of Quebec's high scores was not taking the perhaps because of another reported deal between the Nordiques, the Los Angeles Kings, and Detroit gave up a chance to retrieve Marty Howe along with Survey and Hawk with his famous part for Courtney and Burford Mark. All 17 NHL teams must follow their protected list of 50 players with two goals each by 8 p.m. today before the XWHA teams then call for the available players prepared for Wednesday's draft. Cream, bright blueberries, and Paul McNutton and Jake Dennett said trade the Canap and Nets General Manager Charlie Deakins made inquiries that Celtics ran out about Tulum and then hold off until off Boston Square away from his coaching situation and San Larry Bird. Now that Boston has settled their things they can make sometimes such as Red to the Paul McNutton said the Yorkers. I intend to sit down with Red at NBA meetings in Washington next week. The Celtics have crest on interest in Nets guard Eddie Jordan and draft choice of two. Former Boston owner John White Brown traded three first round draft choice of the Knicks. Earlier this year to get McDoon in the first place. Matthew first came calling, he had the 11th choice in the first round on the June 25th. Oh NBA draft since then, the Nets also acquired the 8th pick in the first round and then deal that sent Harvey Catches in Milwaukee for John Gianelli. Most experts feel that there are 8 out of 10 prospects in the draft this year, said Theo. So he feels we can get one, maybe two real players in the draft, a deal for the Jordan, one other two that the Nets selections could give the Celtics the help they need. Both a guard and quick fort. We need to clarify the McDoon situation quickly. We will not get wait any longer. And that's going to be it for the newsroom, 7 at 6 p.m. on a Saturday evening, June 9th, 1979. P1's last night, Brody Reese and Fred Watson. We have a good, good evening coming next on 
Channel 7 will be Black News coming to next, and Channel 7 will be back with News from 7 at 11 o'clock. Have a good evening.